All right, guys, so I realized that the last couple of questions on your homework assignment are a little bit harder, a little bit different than something we've done in class. Now, you may be able to figure this out, but this is quite an extension. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of talk through this because there's several points that are going to be important as we're trying to figure out a difficult question like this. Now, part of what makes it difficult is the setup, and then part of it is the math that we're going to be using things that we haven't used for a long time. We're going to be using one of our favorites, logarithms. Yeah, logarithms. That's almost our favorite. That's right, next, right up there with vectors and trig, I know. So anyway, let's go ahead and work through the problem. I'm going to use my reading voice. A box contains a large number of carnations, of which one quarter are red. The rest are white. Pause. Okay, so I've got the probability of red is one quarter. The probability of white is three quarters, right? Now, it's important that it says a large number because a large number means that pulling one out is not going to make a difference in the probability. I mean, it will to like, you know, the hundredths or thousandths place, but it really won't matter if I pull one carnation out. It'll still be approximately one out of four for red and three out of four for white. All right, so let's keep going. Carnations are picked at random from the box. How many flowers must be picked? So the probability is that there is at least one red carnation among them is greater than 0 0.95. Okay, so if we kind of think about this, if I pick one flower, there could either be zero reds or one red. Now what I'm looking for is at least one red carnation, which is this, at least one. Now what if there's two flowers? Then I could have zero reds, one red, or two reds. Again, at least one red would be these. Okay, now three flowers would be zero reds, one reds, two reds, or three reds. Of course, I'm talking about reds here. Okay, so three could mean up to three reds, and again, at least one would be these. Now, you'll notice that this, what I want, is changing every time. So. I can't, one problem is I can't do binome CDF on what I want because binome CDF, remember, goes down. The other part is that what I want is changing every single time, so I can't just do it once. I'd have to do it and guess and check every single time. Is that a valid way of doing this? Yes, but it's going to take you a freakishly long time. So what I'm going to invite you to do is say, oh, look, what I don't want is the same every time. Zero reds, right? So really, what I want is that the probability of zero reds, now I want it to be 0.95, so therefore, the probability of zero reds needs to be less than 0 0.05, right? Because if the probability of zero reds is less than 0 0.05, that means the probability of one or more is then greater than 0.95. Now, another way of saying that, instead of saying zero reds, you could also say the probability of all white it needs to be less than 0 0.05. Okay, so if there's less than that, so 0 0.04, 0 0.03, that means that having a red is more likely than 0.95. Now, whether there's one red or two reds or three reds, that's besides the point. It really doesn't matter. The question just wants there to be at least one red carnation. Now, you may ask, how does it help me to buy one? And I will answer your question. Because if I want them all to be white, that means in my tree diagram, right, you got white, red, then you got white, red, then you got white, red. So regardless of how many whites you have, how many flowers you have, they're all going to be along this path right here. Now, the probability of all those is the same. It's 3 to the 4th. So how many times am I going to, am I going to have 3 over 4? Not 3 to the 4th, 3 fourths, right? Well, it's however many flowers I have. How many flowers do I have? I don't know. Exactly. That's what we're looking for. So n. So n equals the number of flowers. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 3 fourths and multiply by 3 fourths and multiply by 3 fourths as many times as I need to until that is less than 0 0.05. Pretty snazzy, huh? Now you say, but, but nothing. 
we're going to solve this now because we know that if the variable is in the exponent, how do we get it out? We do a logarithm. So to get rid of this, I need to do log of 0.75. Now you can actually just do log of both sides, just normal log, but as long as you're going to have to be using your stinking calculator anyway, we may as well go log of 0.75 and do the same thing to both sides. Now, when I do that, uh, okay, so with this, it's important that we recognize what happens, because now I'm going to have n. Now, I'm doing it this way really quick because, you know, I want you to recognize that if you do this, log of 3 fourths, do you know what logs do to an inequality? Chances are you probably don't. Okay, so what we actually need to do, rather than doing log of 0.75, is we're just going to do a normal log. Okay, now a normal log is going to follow your normal inequality rules. Okay, and so therefore I can just leave the inequality the way it is. So I'm going to have log of 3 fourths to the n is less than log of 0 0.05. Now, I can take the n, of course, and move it in front. So I now have n log of 3 fourths is less than log of 0 0.05. Now, what I recommend doing here is taking just a minute to find out what the log of 3 fourths is and the log of 0 0.05. Anytime that I can actually just do that and get a number, it'll make things a little bit easier in the long run. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go log of Where's log? Log of 3 fourths, so 3 over 4. And I get negative. See, this is y. You'll see that you get n times negative 0.129. Why is that Im important? Well, it's because, so negative 1.301. It's because when I divide by this, I'm going to be dividing by a negative. And what happens to an inequality when I divide by a negative? Well, obviously, it's going to then become, it's going to need to switch around. So I, I divide by a negative 0.129. Divide by a negative 0.129. Switch the inequality. And then we say that divided by negative 0.124. Then I'm going to go ahead and put the 938 down as well. And I get 10.4. So n is greater than 10.4. So therefore, I have to have more than 10.4 flowers, which means the answer to my question is that I need 11 flowers. OK. So hopefully that made sense. The big idea was I wanted to show you how to kind of set it up, how to reason through it, and not only that, but also to consider the idea that you're going to have to use a logarithm, to be careful with the logarithms, because most people at this place right here will just take and that we'll just divide by log of 3 fourths, which is great, but they don't recognize that log of 3 fourths is negative. So one thing to remember is that your log graph looks like this, right? So anything less than 1 here, any fraction between 0 and 1, is going to give you a negative logarithm. So when you divide by that, you don't have to put into decimals here, but you do need to recognize whether this is going to be positive or negative and whether the sign needs to flip or not. Okay, well, that's it. Hopefully that'll help you on your homework tonight. Cheers.